Welcome on in, guys. Tobin here with you. And thanks for checking out the channel. Hope everybody's doing fantastic out there. Thank you for checking us on out. If you guys could subscribe, that'd be great. Appreciate you stopping by. Uh, Tobin and Leroy's show. You guys can subscribe to the QAM YouTube page. We're live weekdays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. If you missed today's show, you guys can go back and watch that one as I do this here on a Friday afternoon, heading on into a weekend, a packed weekend. You got the Pinks in action on Friday night. You got Canes, Heat, Panthers, UFC, a jam-packed Saturday. Sunday, you get yourself a little Finny Finny Fins with a D-Wade statue getting unveiled. And then uh, it's all happening for us, baby. It's a it's a fun, fun time down here in South Florida sports. Um, however, however, it is tough not to think of this season as a little bit snake bit. Because just when you thought things were all coming together for the Miami Dolphins, Tua officially cleared a concussion protocol today. Tyreek Hill, though he wasn't practicing, Mike McDaniel is telling reporters he's very optimistic that he'll practice and that Jalen Waddle will practice. My heart snapped in two because maybe my favorite player on the team, maybe my favorite player on the team. In fact, I would go out on a limb and say he is my favorite player on the team. Sealer it on up. Zach Sealer is unable to play because he had his eye poked in practice. And I just, I I don't even know anymore, dude. Like, you want to talk about, this is, first of all, this is the second eye poke. The second eye poke that has taken out a Miami Dolphin this year. It happened to... Uh, to Ron Armstead but the thing that's really pissing me off to be honest with you if Zach Sealer can't play you guys think that like he's if he can't play you guys are really questioning Zach Sealer's toughness Zach mother bleeping Sealer the the guy is basically a grizzly bear who has to who has to legally wear pads every single week. I mean, like, man's man, Zach Sealer. And to see people question on this up, it's an eye poke. That's what's keeping him out? A poke in the eye? He can't play with an eye patch? He can't play with a visor? Hey, dum dums. If you can't see. You can't see. And you think that he's supposed to be out there on the field tangoing with 300 pounders with a sight deficiency. Are you mother bleeping kidding me? This is something that people are actually having a debate with. They are getting on their computers and being like, <laughs> put on the patch, Zach, get out there. Ugh. The dude never misses games. Never misses games. Played at like the highest work rate of anybody on the defensive line last year. Is like always available. And people are sitting here being like, I can't believe he's not going out there like a pirate. I can't with this fan base sometimes, man. Or any fan base. That's crazy to me. His eye doesn't work, dude. And like that's like a it's a serious freaking thing your eye health and what you can do around it. You see it with fighters. If a guy gets a bad poke, yes, yeah, sometimes they can continue. If it's a graze, they can continue. Sometimes you'll see these things, dude. I'll watch UFC fights and a guy gets a finger in there, dude. That thing cyclopses on you like crazy, and that is going to be like weeks of being out. So who knows what the f happened? Now, my immediate suspicion was to blame Liam Eikenberg, but I have my own biases there. Now, Liam Eikenberg, I read on Barry Jackson's Twitter, has denied. But I, I just, like, I was legitimately, like, reading, like, why can't he play with a visor? He probably will when he's healthy, when his eye is open and he probably can see. Then I imagine protect it with a visor. Now? Crazy, dude. Barry Jackson says Calais Campbell said he might be needed to play more with Sealer out says he's fine with that said it could have been worse with Sealer. He was in good spirits today. Sealer screamed when it happened. Understandably, Liam Eikenberg, who's close to Sealer, said it wasn't him. Had to be asked. I, re I appreciate you asking that, Barry. 
I don't like that, man. Yeah, you know, like all this stuff is crazy. I know it's been a snake bit season. I know it's been rotten. But, dude, if there's anybody who's built up, if there's anybody who's built up goodwill for this fan base, you don't think it should be that guy? That's crazy to me. That's like when you start turning on like everybody because you're upset with the uh, you're you're upset with where your seasons have gone, and then like nobody's good enough for you. Like you know that that person's not the cause of the problem or the root of the problem or anywhere near it, but he has to get the wrath too. Why can't you go out there? Why can't you be like the X Man? Be a Cyclops? Like what do you want this to be? Any given Sunday, you want an eyeball falling on the field? crazy to I me mean, somebody legitimately said have him play with a patch what else what do you what would you like him to do would you like him to put a macaw on his shoulder do tell it's crazy man it's a, it's a it's a freaking bummer he's legitimately one of their best players on defense um doesn't feel like this is ever you know it's the nfl so why would you ever expect there to be a week where everything comes together the good news is it sounds like agba and Javon Holland are going to be good to go. So that's huge. And then obviously, you know, Tua finally getting cleared as a monster. But I will say, like, look, the Cardinals, they got some explosive players. They haven't necessarily uh, executed on a lot of that, especially through the air. But they got some guys who can run. I mean, James Conner was certainly a behemoth this last week. You saw what Kyler Murray can do. So, yeah, not having Zach Sealer is not great, Bob. It, it it certainly is something that you should you should sit here and be like I still think the Dolphins should win the game, um, and and I'm hopeful that we could actually see an offense come together. And I actually I genuinely mean this. Like with these backup quarterbacks, I would feel like my especially last week my skepticism was high on that game. I was like, eh, I don't think I don't think Indianapolis sucks that much, and I I just I don't know the Dolphins' margin for error just seems so small now. You uh you get your star quarterback back. I guess you could be a little bit concerned that your two star receivers have injuries they're dealing with. Um, although you know Tyreek wasn't seen at practice today. Mike McDaniel saying he's very optimistic he's in practice. He was posting a ton on social media. Posted him and Jalen Waddle. He's posting like nice stuff. He wasn't trying to be a a troll like he is half of the time. So yeah, I I think that is that's something that is 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 certainly you 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 got to have the expectations that they get these things right this is a team that they can certainly do it again this is not um this is not a very impressive cardinals defense and one that's even getting banged up as well so we'll see but the dolphins i mean like look it's woeful they're the worst scoring team in the league so it certainly needs to start this week it certainly needs to start this week and then you could start eyeballing what hope looks like. But if you're going to have any hope, this is going to be the week to do it. Certainly losing Sealer sucks. Um, they're going to go into this thing probably with no Cater Co., probably with no Storm Duck. Does that mean Cam Smith can step up and do anything? This is going to be a big test for him. Um, so still plenty of questions. There's still plenty of there's still plenty of things you look around and you're like, all right, I'm not – but. Uh, on the offensive side of things, because the defense, it, it's a weird thing. Whatever the defensive ox- obstacles seem to be, whether it was Fangs, whether it is Anthony Weaver, they seem like they're able to do pretty damn well and figure it out. Um, with the offense, this is, I mean, this is as healthy, you know, putting in the context, we don't know how banged up Cheetah and Waddle are. But it's about as healthy as the offensive line, the offense in general has been. With Tua coming back, the offensive line being pretty strong, all of your running backs, um, you know, so there's that's fully stocked there. It's fully stocked there to 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 take a look at this thing and to see how it can operate and you know can Mike find a balance too? Like if they find something with a run game, will he stick with it? You know, will he? You know, go and I honestly think I mean, for sure the Dolphins are going to do the move where where Tyree kill. They're going to they're going to. It feels almost too obvious they're going to try and chuck the cheetah early, um, which I understand. You want to cut cheetah loose. You want to you want you get your weapons back. You want to throw a formidable punch first. Uh, I don't I don't see the Dolphins slow rolling it and being like, no, 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 no. A lot of most dirt, And then we'll surprise them with the cheetah attack. The way he's talking this week, 
And I will say, Tyreek Hill has an ability to do this. He has an ability to excite me as a fan with his words in in a crazy way. It's why like I don't like when he trolls because he is he's he's like the Dolphins Dana White. Like he's their promoter. He's their Don King. He can he can uh he can gas up the fan base and he can get them ready and he can legitimately get them fired up um about a lot of things. But yeah, hearing the way that he spoke this week about how he and Tua were practicing got me it got me really, really juiced up for what this performance is going to be, uh, and 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 so he, I, I would definitely expect the Dolphins are going to take some home run shots. I think Tua wants to do it. I think Cheetah wants to do it. And as Mike McDaniel said, they're his teammates. They're not his players, and he he instills a lot of influence into them. So we'll see what that turns into. But certainly Zach Sealer not being there really sucks, and it really sucks to see uh, any of the Dolphin fans calling him out on it.